Hello everyone, welcome to Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. So yeah, the story of this game goes like this. After his defeat in Super Mario Land 2, who, apparently the Sugar Pirates from Kitchen Isle, stole a statue of Princess Peach. And Mario's basically looking for it. Wario, still wanting a castle more than ever, or hears about this news, and decides to steal the pirate's treasure, coins, and find the statue himself for a princess's ransom. For Mario can. So he can get his own castle. Bigger and better than Mario. Or that's how the story goes. Anyway, I might have talked about it before, but this whole bring back the national dex thing is getting out of control. I, I, I've talked about it on Twitter. Twitter, I mean, like, you've probably seen it on Twitter. If you, like, go to any of Pokemon Twitter's tweets. It's, and it's even now on the developer's game. A suit is Twitter. It's like, yeah. are gonna be in, in this one, like in Sword and Shield, I'm okay with it. Because I have spread and recaptured her Pokemon I have since I was transitioning from uh, Omega Ruby to Sun and Moon. Yeah, this is the 3DS Virtual Console version of the game. So... Yeah. There's gonna be a bit less difficulty here. Or you can probably remember it. So yeah, Wario gets power-ups, ups he can still be hurt, like with those little thing spears. But, yeah, it, it's a little different from any other Mario game, and you might be confused by the title. Why it's called Super Mario Land 3. But it is the first in the Wario Land series. It's kind of like why they, uh, called Yoshi's Island Super Mario World 2. Yeah, Wario had a buzz cut back then. Honestly, I can't blame Get Game Freak for also making the decision to limit some of the Pokemon. On it was gonna eventually reach a ridiculous number or to model, program, program the moves, make the moves, and then balance it all together. 
They were considering this during Sun and Moon. Moon, but then, on top of that, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon came out with some new Pokemon. Well, not many, but a few more programmed in. There's a trick with the Virtual Console version for this minigame that I'm going to use. Help restore point. Okay, back to talking about this. Here's the thing. Dang, I've seen people, like, even try to prove Game Freak wrong. Like, this one dude on Twitter. Uh, well, not Twitter, Reddit. Of all places. From scratch, modeled, textured, and animated a Wingle. Well, that is impressive. If you still gotta get the recipe thousand. Maybe you should talk to them when you get like a good chunk, like 151. Fun. And honestly, Game Freak is a team of 70 people. If it wasn't for Creatures Inc. doing 3D models for for X and Y, I I don't think we would have gotten Omega Ruby and out to Sapphire. Or even Sun and Moon. That's a lot of Pokemon. They all have their own unique data. And to cram that on a cartridge size of, I don't know, 6 to 4 gigabytes? Yeah, I know the Switch is 32, but then you gotta include the new ones. Well, as well as Kellar's huge. Massive. Pansky. Quite honestly, I think it might be a little too late for Super Sword and Shield to bring back every single one of them. You know what? I'm comfortable with them I'm waiting until the next game in Pokemon Home. Oh, yes. Well, can't bring them in Sword and Shield, they'll be available in probably another game. Game. You know, like how certain characters and enemies in Mario games, games just appear in some. Um, but not all. Oh, uh, I mean like, yeah. I understand that, like, everyone has their favorite Pokemon. On at least one person in one species of Pokemon is somebody's favorite that one person's favorite, at the very least. At the minimum. I know this. But I'm still excited for Jordan Shield. Either way, hey, even though I'm a little disappointed that not every Pokemon's in. I thought I was quite upset about it. You know what? I calmed down after a bit. Didn't realize that it was gonna eventually happen. I actually knew this probably way back in the days of X and Y that this was gonna be eventually a problem. Like the sheer number of Pokemon, including forms. That's a lot of data. However, I did send out a string of tweets. Like a solution, like a Pokemon Battle Revolution 2. 2 that uses cloud that downloads the data from a cloud, syncs with Pokemon Home. You know, a Pokemon game solely for battles. Like, all the resources are dedicated to battling. Like, the 
they're worried about, like, like the, the data size of the Pokemon. Here, here's something simple. Say hey, the data is downloaded from the cloud to the target system. Um, there's so much potential for a sequel to Pokemon Battle Revolution in Coliseum or, or Stadium or XD. Detail Darkness. Honestly, I'd like a Pokemon Battle Revolution, too. Ooh, here's the thing. Pokemon Battle Revolution wasn't even made by Game Freak. They were made by Genius Sonori. Worked on Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness, and Pokemon Coliseum. Oh dear, tell me this thing's not glitching. Oh, it's my computer. Honestly, I think if they worked with Game Freak and had another developer do that, that'd be great. Maybe even release it for multiple platforms. Imagine that on hard gaming PC. And I did not use my trick. Costing me. For Wario. But back to what I was saying. I really think they should do that. Or, like, I don't know, add them in future updates. So people can come back and still play the game. Or maybe that's the plan. And while they're modeling and adding all the data and game balancing it. But again, Game Freak's a team in 70 people. And honestly, I think they should be even higher, too. Dude, like the dude on Reddit who made the wingle. Any hands can make light work, but I also understand making the chef spoil the rock. Huh, I get it. But with that sheer amount of Pokemon, I, I think you can... A little more people. Pokemon being in 
With, like, uh, I don't know, me, some evolutions that got added. Regional variants. Maybe all the mythicals and legendaries. I'm hoping Game Freak keeps in uh, Sword and Shield. You know, I mean, like, they've been distributing them monthly past two years in mythicals and legendaries. I don't see why they should cut them out. Oh, if they're so well known in Pokemon. Uh, I mean, nobody forgets them. Um, but at the same time, I understand in the plight with the people on the National Dex side. Alright. And honestly, complaining on Twitter really just doesn't do anything Dang. that I know of. I think if you really wanted to get a message to them, go to their support website, send that to them. I'm on how you feel about it. It's their job to do that. It goes back to the internal team. Again, it may not happen in Sword and Shield, but it could happen in a future game or update. Better yet, Pokemon Battle Revolution 2. Why can't we have that? It would not only take a lot of work off Game Freak's shoulders, but... <laughs> I think it would make a lot of people happy. And aside from all the National Dex hooey, I've gotta say this. Props for making the Pokemon that pays homage Yes. Charlie Sheen actually loves Obstacle. I am not kidding. I think that's the coolest thing in the world. World, and so does my father, or who I told about this. Just like, like they went to bands in the 70s, and they were doing it live in concert. Okay, that was just satisfying right there. And honestly, I'm gonna love Obstagoon. Because Zigzagoon, I remember playing Ruby on my Game Boy Advance kid my father's truck. Like, all the time. I still have the cartridge. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. And I didn't use my technique. I could have crossed it. So, uh, yeah, that's enough of the National Dex Huey. No way, I might make a video on it later. Air, still excited for Pokemon Sword and Shield. No, either way. Hey, I think I'm gonna love it. Especially with the Charlie. With the. Uh, Jeez! His name's always on the tip, tip of my tongue. The Kiss Pokemon.
And I know I just said it. But yeah. That's it for now. Now here's something else we have to agree on. Apparently somebody thought it was a good idea this day and age to make a live-action He-Man movie. Please. Oh no, please no. The internet will eat that. Especially the second you show Skeletor. The internet will be all over that. I'm just surprised why anyone would, one would do that. Oh, and apparently these spikes are for show for protection. And they still don't do much against Wario's... Wario's ramming shoulder back. But also look out for the spikes. In general. Press and hold up, up Wario's little Viking transformation will be, uh, able to cling to ceilings. Ceilings, and honestly, this is probably one of the few games, well, one of the two games currently, that use transformation for Wario in a Mario-like way. Hey. The other Wario Land games just had Wario gain crazy powers from, uh, well, reactions to something like being on fire, frozen, then flattened, squashed with a mallet, bitten by a vampire or zombie, the list goes on. Yeah, 
I'm making quick work of this camera bros. Getting hit in the head with a sack of money is nice. Nice, but a 10 ton weight. 8 has to hurt. To a degree. It, again, this is Wario we're talking about. Now, who is... Pretty darn tough. Ninety-nine. Max. Look at that, we're over a thousand coins already. Done with Rice Beach. For now. Next time, we'll be heading into Mount Teapot. Bye and thank you for watching.